Hi everyone, my name is Kelly and welcome to church. And today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite Bible stories, Noah. You might know that guy, right? See, he built the boat, the rain came down and the whole earth was flooded, but there's a whole lot more we can learn about the life of Noah. But first, let's stand up and start by singing our memory verse. It's Jeremiah 29:11, which says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for disasters, plans to give you a future and a hope. Let's sing. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future. I love that song. It really reminds me of how God has good things planned for those who believe Him, and part of God's plan means us obeying Him, even when other people don't. He has good things in store for those who obey Him. And one of my favorite guys in the Bible obeyed God, and his name is Noah. And you know what he did? He followed God's rules because God rules. Let's check out this video and see if we can learn something from Noah's story. Stories of the Bible, Noah and the Flood. This is Noah. Hey! Noah was a good man who tried to do the right thing. Yeah! But in the time when Noah lived, he was the only man on earth who was doing the right thing. All the other people on earth were doing evil things and hurting each other. This made God very sad. So God said that he was going to send a flood to the earth that would destroy every living thing on earth because he was sorry he ever made them. But God decided to save Noah and his family. God told Noah to build a boat and fill it with two of every kind of animal and bird. Colors, bird, moth, okay, all here. Noah did just that and then Noah and his whole family boarded the boat and waited for the flood to come. 
the rain fell hard for 40 days and 40 nights. Water! Water covered the whole earth, and the boat floated safely on the surface. Water covered even the highest mountains on earth, but Noah and his family were saved. God remembered Noah and all the animals on the boat. God sent a wind to blow across the earth, and the flood began to go away. After five months, the boat came to rest on a mountaintop. A few months later, the other mountains could be seen. Forty days later, Noah opened a window and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood had dried up. He also sent a dove out to see if it could find dry ground. But the dove couldn't find a place to land because there was still water on the ground. So the dove returned to the boat. Oh, hello again. After another seven days, Noah sent the dove out again. This time, it came back with an olive leaf. Oh, good girl. So Noah knew that the floodwaters were almost gone. A week later, he sent the dove out again, and it didn't come back. So many months after the flood began, Noah opened the covering of the boat and saw that the ground was drying. He waited two more months, and at last, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Leave the boat, all of you. Release the animals so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. Okay. So Noah, his family, and all the animals finally left the boat. See ya. Noah built an altar to the Lord to make a sacrifice to God. God was pleased with Noah's offering and said to himself that he would never again destroy every living thing on earth. God blessed Noah and his sons and promised them that he would never send another flood. He gave them the rainbow in the sky as a sign of this promise to Noah, his family, and all of mankind. Wow, God asked Noah to do something crazy, and Noah obeyed God even when nobody else did. See, he built a boat and saved his whole family, and he saved all the animals in the whole world just because he did what God said. I don't know about you, but I want to be like Noah. Sometimes it's hard to do what God wants us to do because other people might think we're crazy. But just like Noah, God had really good plans for us so that we can be a part of his plan if we choose to obey him. God used Noah to save humanity because God knew he can trust him to obey. That makes me think, does God trust me? Are you the kind of person that God can trust to do big things even when other people are not willing to do it? God wants to do something huge in your life, but all it takes is for us to listen and follow his plans. Speaking of plans, I think Tyler, Greg, and Caroline have some fun plans for us today. Let's go ahead and check out their weekly video call. Let's see what they're up to. Okay, so today is game day. Now, I've logged way too many hours playing Animal Crossing and I need to have some real interaction with actual people. So, that's why today I'm gonna try and convince everyone to play Minute to Win It games. I am pumped for this. It's gonna be amazing. Let's see how it goes. Okay, Greg, so explain this again. They're like mini games that you play with your friends and what do you do? Yeah, Greg, sorry buddy, but that explanation was pretty bad. You gotta start again from the top. All right, all right, I got a little bit pumped up, but let me just back up a little bit. <clears throat> Hi everyone, my name's Greg, and today I wanted to try and play a minute to win it game. How's that? Okay, so minute to win it games are games that we can all play as a group even when we're online. Now, they only require everyday things that you can find around your house, like cookies or tissue boxes. Now, the object of the game is to finish the task in a minute or less, and the first one who finishes is the winner. 
Now we can play two rounds and we'll play elimination style. So at the end, there will be one winner who gets the grand prize. Okay, that's the Greg I know, baby. See, now that actually makes sense. Yeah, Greg, the second time you explained that, it made a lot more sense. Sounds fun. Tyler, are you down to give it a try? I mean, I don't know. It sounds like it might be kind of boring. Ty, please don't say no. Please, please, please. <sighs> okay, okay, fine. Let's do it. But this grand prize better be amazing. Ty, it will. I promise. I will not let you down, buddy. Okay, so the first minute to win a game that we're going to play is none other than Shake It Off. Now, Shake It Off is a fun game where the object of the game is to fill a tissue box filled with ping pong balls. You tie it around your waist and then you shake around like crazy until they all come out. First one with all the ping pong balls out is the winner. Amazing, that actually sounds like fun. What do you think, Ty? Yeah, it sounds great. I'm, I'm just trying to practice how I'm gonna win this game. <laughs> yeah, right, Tyler, you're going down. I like it, a little bit of friendly competition. I'm gonna text you guys the instructions on how to assemble the tissue box and put all the ping pong balls inside. You say we meet back up in 10 minutes. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's do it. Okay, so now that we're all back, we have our tissue boxes assembled. All we have to do is secure them to our waist with our trusty strings. Got it. Got it, tying it now. All right, now just make sure it's properly secured and that the ping pong balls are inside. Now we should be good to go. Now I'll get the clock set for a minute and we'll get started. I almost forgot. I'm gonna play some music to help everyone get dancing. All right, everyone, you ready? Ready. ready. On your marks. Get set, go! I think I did, I won! I won! <laughs> what? Ty? I'm done, look! Ty, you're the winner! Yes! <laughs> Congrats! And I gotta get better at those dance moves. I can't believe I came in last place. Ty, that means you and Caroline, you guys both advance to the next round. Yes! I love this game. Okay, cool. Greg, what's the next game? So the next game is gonna be called Face the Cookie. Now, Face the Cookie is a classic minute to win a game. We've all played it before. Contestants place a cookie on their face, and then they have to get that cookie into their mouth. Sounds easy, right? Well, rock. You can't use your hands. First one to get the cookie from their forehead to their mouth without using their hands wins. Sounds good? Sounds good to me. Man, this one's gonna be really hard. Sounds good, Greg. Tyler, you're going down. Like that competition. All right, I'm gonna go get the cookies. Contestants, we'll see you back here in 10 minutes. All right, guys, so now that we got our cookies, we're ready to begin. So contestants, place the cookies on your foreheads. <laughs> and remember the most important rule, no hands. If the cookie falls, you have to start over again, and put it on your forehead. May the best cookie master win. Ready, on your mark, get set. This is gonna be fun. Go! <laughs> Whoa! Oh. <laughs> All right, keep it going. The cookies are getting close there. Man, these cookies are good. Uh. All right, Charlie, you're looking good, buddy. Good job. Does this count? Caroline's getting close. Does this count, Greg? Oh! Whoa! It's getting close! <laughs> oh, and Caroline's the winner! It. I got well, it. Actually, actually, sort of. Well, actually, no. Um, Caroline, you're not the winner. Tyler, you're the winner. What? Are you serious? I totally won and finished before him. That's not even fair. You didn't really follow the rules, and Tyler did. So by default, that makes him the winner. I mean, obeying the rules is half of the game. Sweet. So I actually won. This is this is amazing. I get to eat a cookie and I win a game at the same time. Man, this day just keeps getting better. I'm proud of you, Tyler. You did a great job. I mean, you know, the whole last game that we played reminds me of the story in the Bible about Noah. Really? I didn't see any water anywhere and there's no flood. What do you think I've read the wrong story, Greg? <laughs> it's definitely Noah. I mean, Caroline, this might be a little harsh and you're my friend, so I can tell you this, but you reminded me of the people who chose not to obey the law, God's law and commands. And Tyler, you kind of reminded me of Noah because he chose to do what God said even when others didn't. 
No, that's not too harsh. I know I cheated and broke the rules. I just really wanted to win. Rules are important and they are put in place for a reason. Just like there are rules in a game, God gives us rules in life to obey and live by. And it's our decision to choose to follow them or not. I guess I should have followed them this time. Exactly, Caroline. And we should always try to follow God's plan because his plans are always good and he knows what's best for us. I mean, when we choose to follow God's plan, it's a way of showing him that we love him and trust him. Wow, you're exactly right. I'm totally Noah. And I wasn't even trying to be like him. I was just following the rules that Greg had laid out. They didn't totally make sense because, come on, not using your hands to eat a cookie is kind of crazy. But in the end, I am glad that I did follow the rules because it helped me win. <laughs> Ty, I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, sometimes people will think that God's plans are silly or that they don't make sense and they'll choose not to follow them. But when that happens, we should remember Noah and instead follow his example. God's plans are always the best and we have to choose to follow them daily. All right, so it's now time for the grand prize. Tyler, in honor of you winning our competition and following all of your rules, I'm giving you a year's worth of Skittles. What? what? That's amazing. I mean, that's a little bit random, but those are my favorite candy. Look, God gave Noah a rainbow to serve as a reminder to him, and I wanted to give you a year's supply of Skittles. So, to serve as a reminder to you to always do what God says. Wow, Greg, that's deep, and that's a really good connection. Did you plan that, or was that just a coincidence? Didn't plan it at all. 100% coincidence. Hey, thank you guys so much. This was a blast. You are the best, but I gotta go. I'll catch you guys back here next week though. And Greg, thank you again. I'm so stoked to get all those Skittles in the mail. All right, I'm gonna go too. See you guys. I can't believe I lost Shake It Off. I gotta practice. That was pretty easy. I gotta do that next time. Oh my goodness, that game looks so much fun. Now I wanna eat a cookie too. See, but think about it. You have to pay attention to the rules in order to play the game. That's how you win. Similar to God. See, God has rules in the Bible. And when you play according to his rules, that's how you can be a part of his perfect plan. See, there's many ways that you can be a part of his perfect plan by obeying your parents and listening to teachers or by doing what the Bible says, by treating people with kindness, respect, and love. And even if you don't understand what God's plan is for your life, you can still pray to him and talk to him about what's going on in your life. Let's brush up on some of our Bible stories that we're learning by playing a little review game. That's right, it's time for our Space Goat Quiz. Let's check it out. Roger, Roger. For thousands of years, people have looked up to the stars and wondered what's beyond. Thoughts of distant galaxies, strange planets, and possibly even life unlike any we've known on Earth. But no one could have ever imagined in the deep expanse of our universe lives one furry creature with four legs and a jetpack. Bah. His name is Space Goat, and he's here to help you. And he's here to help us. Here to help us answer life's toughest questions. What set Noah apart from all the other people who lived on Earth? Was it A, Noah lived righteously? Was it B, Noah had the golden ticket? Or was it C, Noah was indestructible? The correct answer is A, Noah lived righteously, which set him apart from all other people on Earth. Well done, cadets. How long did the Lord make the rain flood the earth? Was it A, to infinity and beyond? Was it B, 40 days and 40 nights? Or was it C, 365 days. That's correct, cadets. 
the Lord made the rain flood the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Well done, cadets. What did the dove bring back to Noah? Was it A, a one-up mushroom? Was it B, junk mail? Or was it C, an olive branch? That is correct. The dove brought Noah an olive branch. Well done, cadets. Until next time, stay spacey, cadets. Nice job, guys. God asked Noah to do some really hard things, right? I mean, like build a giant boat out of wood. I don't know if I could have done that. Noah was up to God's challenge. We might be up to some big challenges too, but one thing is always true. God already told us the end plan. Because of Jesus, we get to spend forever with God where there's no more pain, no more hurting, and no more hard things. When you are a child of God, you get to be a part of this amazing plan. Hey, I hope you enjoyed church this week, and I hope to see you again next week. But until then, remember, check out the activities and the coloring pages at SaddlebackKids.com. We love you. I'll see you next week. Bye.